Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Today we're talking all about this, my 50 by 50 metal building, my metal barn, my, my big black barn, LLOD, H, I don't know what I'm gonna call it. I should think of some name for this building probably. But if you followed my channel for a bit, I, I designed and built this house, uh, started in August of 2022 and then finished in May of 2023. Yeah, it's, it's an ongoing project though. It's, you know, 99% done, but I'm, you know, doing a little this and that, but built the house and then built this, paved this, and this whole area is kind of, kind of ready now. So this is kind of my driveway as you come in. It's nice we were able to get this paved before winter. You see all the snow, obviously, because otherwise this would just be a messy, messy, muddy mess. So very excited that all of this is done. Attached three car garage. The garage is a little oversized. It's like 32, 33 by 32 or 33 in there. I forget exactly. And then this guy here is a 50 by 50 building. So the original plan was actually to build this before the house. I'd have a place to store everything and work out of and stuff while I built this. Some stuff happened originally. I was thinking about putting the barn over there, but once we kind of started building the house, I was like, yeah, maybe it makes more sense there. So I changed a bunch of stuff around with my, my design and my plan. I did obviously permit the whole house and then I did permit this. So when you bring permitting into the equation, you got to do a bunch of other extra stuff. You got to have a lot more plans and you got to get approval from the county. So that kind of set some of this stuff back, but basically started building the house and was just like that consumed all my time and all my attention. And I said, I'll just build this thing later. So once that was done, then I could focus on, on reworking everything with the county I needed for this. And finally it's in, sorry, the light is so bright over here and the barn is black, so I can hardly see the screen. I'm not sure how well that's coming through. But yeah, that's all a little bit of backstory. I'm mostly just gonna be talking about kind of the process of building some things for you to consider if you wanna get something like this. It's the coolest thing that I've ever had in my life. You know, I've had, I've had car, you know, my, I, I love my house, but like, I don't know, just a, a building for things and to do whatever I want with is, is pretty, Sweet, so probably a dream of a lot of guys and I'm fortunate, blessed. I mean, I worked hard for it, obviously. We're very stoked to have this. So the exterior, before we get inside, I got a bunch of snow uh, melting off the roof. That's one thing I need to consider. I was required to put snow stops on my metal roof here so that the snow didn't fall and, you know, kill anyone or whatever. Wasn't required it for this building, so I didn't put it on this building. And I kind of wanted to firsthand compare the pros and cons of just having the snow kind of melt and slide off versus having it stuck on and just kind of melt and go down the gutters. I think I'll probably move to a snow stop with gutters on this as well to just kind of keep things cleaner. Probably can't see too much on camera, but right now all this stuff is just dripping off and then it's all splashing here. And eventually I'm gonna put a chicken coop and a run, maybe some goats, I don't know, kind of over here off of this barn. And this is just gonna be a muddy mess over here. So eventually probably snow stops, gutters, get that drainage all proper. But for now, it's just kind of coming off. The outside's pretty plain. I have a few windows. I have three windows on the side, on the upper portion on this side, three on the upper portion on the other side. Window and a human door here and a window and a human door on the other side. And then on the front, just some big, big doors. So two years ago, I started researching, started the process to get into this uh, building here, to get it built. Started watching YouTube videos, researched a bunch of stuff online, compared pricing between, the, this is not a pole barn, this is all metal. Everything is metal. There's not a single piece of wood used to construct this whole building. Though when I finish it off on the inside, I'll insulate it and probably use some wood and whatnot, but no wood at all, pole barn. Not a pole barn, but uh, when people are researching, you kind of compare a pole barn to a metal building and then another category is, they're kind of called red iron buildings. And those are the big, thick red, usually beams. And the red is just like a primer color, uh, beams that are kind of like that. Those I found were kind of the most expensive. 
These were priced pretty similar to pole barns, maybe, and I, I didn't get all the quotes in the world, and this may be different depending on where you live. This was actually the most cost-effective solution to build the type of building that I wanted to do. Now, there are a bunch of different styles of building that you can do. Mine is like a barn, big main portion, and then two lean-tos, but I kind of brought it all together with one building on the inside. I went with a company after all my research called Big Buildings Direct. Now I didn't, I didn't like YouTube work with them or anything. I just went in, normal customer, went through the whole process. They're super helpful. The whole process was actually really good. I called in, they answered a bunch of my questions and everything. And then I basically let the project sit for two years while I figured all the permitting out on this. And then I built this and then I, finally I was ready for this. Uh, so, I don't think much has changed in, in that course, but when they were finally ready to come and build it, I got all my permitting and everything, the guys uh, I kind of talked to and I kind of told them what I did and they're like, oh, you have a YouTube channel, sweet. Like, let us know if you want, you know, like maybe we can give a discount to your, to your followers or something like that. So bigbuildingsdirect.com is giving you guys a discount. I think a couple hundred bucks off a building or something like that. So if you wanna let them know when you write in your contact form or when you call them in, just drop last line of defense or SI on last line of defense. And if you're interested, they'll save you a couple hundred bucks. But they were super, super helpful in this build here. So I kind of went through the design process with them. I said, originally I was gonna go for a 40 by 40, then I was like, I should go a little bigger. I went for a 50 by 50. I'll talk more on this in a second. I probably would go even bigger if I were to do it again. Uh, and I said, I want it black. I want it to look like a barn. I want it to have this aesthetic, but maybe we'll do a white roof because I don't want it to get you know too crazy in, in the summer but it's all black. I don't have doors on. I wanted to show it before I did anything. I'm putting black doors on as well, but it'll be a big black building and I think it looks sweet. But if you don't want this style of building, I just thought it was the coolest style. If you just want, you know, basically the center portion of the building, you could make bigger and not have lean-tos. And that would be a cheaper building overall to make and you'd have a little less broken up interior wise but i just thought it looked so cool so i've been digging a tall tall center portion this is going to have a 14 foot tall by 20 foot wide door on it and 14 foot height is kind of the general height of things that are going to be driving around on the freeway so i was like anything i get if eventually i have a fifth wheel or something it'll be able to fit in here 40 foot or 50 foot depth will be able to fit everything as well and then on the lean twos these are eight foot by eight foot doors uh and i figured that's kind of a half of a standard 16 by eight foot door obviously but probably I would have gone a little wider. Everything I own, including the Tundra, well, not my new bus, but everything else fits into it. But most of your normal, this is an oversized door as well, but it's nine feet wide. And a lot of your single car doors are nine feet. So I probably would have gone nine foot by eight foot or nine foot by nine foot here, uh, cause it could fit it. This lean to is 12 feet wide. Um, so yeah, basically 12 feet, you know, 26 feet roughly in the middle and then 12 feet on that end. And then, yeah, pretty much everything can fit in here to give you an idea of what you could fit. You could fit two land cruisers and a side by side over here. I did have the, my Tacoma, a G35 and a Golf R. But if you have bigger vehicles, like I would only be able to fit a Tacoma and a Tundra. That's why if I were to do it again, I'd probably go for like 60 feet in length or even 70 feet in length. It'll cost more obviously, so you gotta take that into consideration, but I'm super happy with the 50 feet wide. I kind of like these areas just kind of be designated to parking. And then the middle area is kind of a little bit flexible. Um, so yeah, that's the building. As you can see here, uh, basically when you contact them, they're gonna need to go through a whole process with you, depending on where you live. Again, I live in the mountains of Colorado, 
So this has, to ha this has to account for the snow load. So my building here may be different, look a lot different than a building that you see uh, that's for like Texas or something where they might be able to do these like eight foot on center. Mine, I believe are 32 inches on center here. So it's gotta be beefed up more to handle the snow load. These big beams are super thick, uh, double wide. And then what you see here is basically a built out bay because this needs to support the whole roof above it. So these headers basically carry that load down into here, down into there. So I had to engineer thicker slab portions for that area. All that to say, there's, it's not really a one size fits all kind of deal. So you kind of figure out what shape you want. Like I went for the barn again with the main center area and the lean twos. You figure out what size doors or what size things you want to put in there. And then you can kind of go from there and then they'll basically build that building to engineer however you want. Now default, the lean to here would be kind of separated. And the kind of neat things about barns, a lot of times, as you know, like a traditional barn will be storing tractors and equipment or whatever in the main portion sometimes, or have walkways, and then these will be like horse stalls or whatever. So these buildings are kind of designed uh, with the ability to really segregate them off into areas. If you wanna build this out into a room or something like that, you could. I ultimately really just like the aesthetics. I did like kind of having the idea of parking in lanes, but I did want to open it up as much as possible. So we couldn't span the entire load to go the whole way, but I opened it up as much as realistic engineering would allow. And then we just have a center portion here. So these bays, bays I guess, uh, 20 feet wide, nine feet tall. So I could, you know, lay this out differently and park in here and whatnot. And then, yeah, this is obviously kind of angled up like that. I believe this is like something like 13 feet up here. And this is about nine feet on this side. I did, I don't really have anywhere to drive through back here. It's just kind of random random field, but I did do a pass through on this one with just a roller door. They will kind of include, well, I mean, you can buy from them. They do roller doors, but on my main doors, I'm having standard kind of overhead garage doors. I'm not doing anything crazy like hangar doors or anything, but this opening's so big that the garage door will push up basically to the top and have a track so to go overhead and I'll still have, you know, 15 feet of height here. So just similar to your normal garage door. So, you know, you'll work with a garage door company or whatever to get those installed. I just haven't yet. They actually just came in. So here are my garage doors, but one of them was damaged. They picked it up and it was damaged. So we're just gonna wait for that new one to come in and they're gonna install them all at once. Uh, there is gonna be this giant 14 by 20 foot door, I think is gonna be a side mounted kind of heavy duty thing with you know beefed up springs, but that'll come later. I just figured it'd be cool to get this going, get a video of it kind of at, at phase zero, just with the building kind of made. And then this kind of, once you park a bunch of vehicles in here, it kind of looks a little smaller. Like before I had anything in here, it looked huge. And then you don't realize how big cars are. Like if you pulled a car into your living room, it would take up the whole living room. So it's like cars really <laughs> can make a space feel smaller, especially a Tundra on 37s and a big high roof sprinter. But yeah, all that to say, I can fit all my vehicles in here and I have a bunch of vehicles. So that's kind of nice. And yeah, it, it makes it a little difficult. If I had, uh, I might, you know, develop this part of my property back here, but as you can see, it's just kind of the woods, no driveway or anything, but maybe I'll do a pull through and I can turn them around and get cars out a little easier. Because right now, you know, if I want to get this thing out, then I do have to move a couple of those out. I was thinking about parking them in here like angled so I could kind of get them all out and like leave the center area. I don't know what I'm going to do 
exactly still. And then eventually I will run electrical and insulate it and kind of finish everything off with some, I'll probably spray foam insulate, that's very expensive though. And then I'll kind of finish everything, I'll, I'll put some kind of wall treatment, whether that be like metal or you know tongue and groove or something in here. This side, sorry the light's kind of crazy, this side is the same kind of metal exterior, so it's almost kind of finished on this side but I'm gonna finish the whole interior, add lighting, and I'm actually gonna add two car lifts in here. So I went for a six inch slab, and actually went even deeper where I measured out, where I thought I was gonna put a two post lift, and I still may put a two, two post lift in there. I'm not, I'm not positive yet, but I think I'm gonna put a two post lift in here, and then I'm gonna get a four post lift and either put it in one of these side bays or put it in the front. But yeah, if you have a little more foresight than I did, you might wanna kinda plan all that stuff out for the sizing in it. I was just kinda like, I want a big building and then I'll just kinda finish it off in the interior how, how I feel like it'll make sense. But yeah, man door over there. I put the man doors on my house side so that when I'm walking out, I don't need to open up a garage door to get in the building. I'll just get into the building through that door over there. And then I put a man door over here just because I kind of have some more parking over here in my shipping container that I have some, some storage in there. And then I did opt for, like I mentioned earlier, some windows along the top, couple on the sides, and then some in the back here. So yeah, you can, you can do the research yourself. All of my research led me to just deal with this company again, Big Buildings Direct. Uh, Tony over there was super helpful and Brandy. I don't know who you'll talk to <laughs> on the team. Those are just the people that, that I talk to. They have a YouTube channel as well and that's kind of what sold me on it. They have some really helpful videos talking about you know some considerations for metal buildings, uh, the different shapes, the different sizes, kind of, you know, stuff to think about when going through the ordering process. So I found their videos on YouTube super helpful and that's kind of what led me to, to go with them. So yeah, I had a super positive experience. Again, uh, I wasn't trying to really work with them in any capacity. It just kind of, I got to talking with Tony and he was like, hey, yeah, man, like give your followers a discount, like maybe, uh, they they came out and they filmed a video on the building because they thought it was cool. You know, it's kind of cool. A lot of these buildings are just out on like flat farmlands in Texas or whatever. And this is like giant pine trees everywhere, snow on the ground, it's black. So they came out, I think they're probably gonna put a video up of my building on their YouTube channel. But yeah, that's what I went with. I think it was a pretty sick design. There was a lot of back and forth with Tony and his team on Basically, once you have the general structure and the size dimensions and everything laid out, like again, take things into consideration. I wanted to fit something that I, anything that I could drive on the freeway into this building. So I could fit the biggest fifth wheel that they make in here, if I need, I think anyway, the biggest fifth wheel. I don't have a fifth wheel. I don't have any plans to have a fifth wheel, but this is basically a lifetime building. This building is gonna outlive me, so I was like, might as well build it for something that, you know, maybe even bigger than, than I currently am thinking about. So that was my experience in the building. And then the video's getting kind of long, but so yeah, just let them know last line of defense sent you and they'll drop a couple hundred bucks off of your order. And I'll probably talk more, you know, maybe I'll, I'll sync up with, with Tony and his team if there's anything else that I would find helpful in the build. But yeah, basically things to consider are where you live, are you gonna permit it or not? Because they can build this thing to whatever spec, but if you're gonna get it permitted, it's gonna be a lot more work. Again, just built this brand new house. I had to go through all the permitting there and I was like, I'm gonna at least permit the building so it's all good and it's all on paper. It'll increase the value of your, your land and your, your, your whole property. So this was a big investment on my part. Uh, I believe my building, and again, don't, don't take these numbers uh, as black and white because there's a bunch of, bunch of options. Like I went for the color match screws. I needed to engineer it for crazy snow loads. So you might be able to build almost this exact building for for less or it might be more. Again, I, 
I bought this thing like two years ago, so I'm not sure what the prices have done since then. I don't know if they've gone up or down. I think they went up for a while and then down a little bit. They're probably a little higher, but I think, again, not including garage doors, not including the slab, uh, but including one roll-up door and all the windows and the human doors, I think mine, I forget exactly, it was under 50K for the building. I think it was like around $45,000 for this 50 by 50. And I believe the barn, there's a lot more material, a lot more labor, and they, oh, also, I didn't mention, <laughs> they come out and they build it. So I didn't build any of this, which is nice. Uh, I was kind of thinking, should I do a kit? I've never really worked with steel frame buildings and it's much easier with the team, but I didn't build any of this. So that, that price includes them coming and building it and they knock it out in three or four days uh, from start to finish. Again, my building's a little more complex. It's not huge. They build buildings much bigger than this one, uh, but it's kind of, there's a lot going on. So some buildings will go up even, I think they get some buildings up in like a day or two. But anyway, around 45K I think for this 50 by 50 barn with the main big center area. Again, I think the peak of this is like 20 feet tall this door is 14 tall and i believe it's about 16 a little over 16 tall to basically these braces here so about 45k for that you can think my garage doors and again i got big ones and they're just kind of like your standard overhead doors those including the the garage door openers and install on those I believe is about 15K for all three, giant one and then two smaller ones. So for about all three, it's about 15K. So that puts us at 60K. And then the most expensive line item, unfortunately, is concrete. And concrete pricing varies a lot depending on, on where you are. Here in Colorado, I don't know how it compares to, to the rest of the country or, or the world, though I, I think Big Buildings Direct only does the country. They do anywhere in the country though. And I forget, because I use the same guys for concrete. Uh, they did my house, they did my patios, and that was all kind of rolled into one. So I'll have to go look exactly, exactly how much that cost. But again, my concrete was probably more. I went for a six inch slab, and I live in the mountains of Colorado. So my footers have to go pretty deep. I think the shallowest footer I have is like three, three feet deep, and they're relatively wide. Uh, and then there's some excavation costs around that and obviously all the labor and then rebar in here. Uh, I want to say, I want to say it was about 60 grand. I want to say that the concrete was about 60 grand. I'll have to go and look. Maybe if I look, if I can find my, my invoice, I'll put it, you know, the true cost of that here. But again, it was kind of wrapped into some other stuff. So I don't know if they are, they already had some pump trucks. They already had the pump trucks out when, cause they did the patios at the same time as they did the footer. But anyway, I think about, about 60 grand. But again, that price is gonna vary a lot. So this whole structure, including garage doors, slab, building, windows, everything, and that's not me lifting a finger, like a lot of phone calls and stuff, but I didn't do anything. I didn't lay the forms for the concrete. I didn't pour the concrete. I didn't put any of this stuff up. Uh, we're looking at I guess that including the doors, I guess that's about 120. So about $120,000 is what I paid. That's no discounts or anything. That's just regular Joe Schmo pricing. That's about what I paid for all of this here. And it's kind of just a nice big driveway. I wanted to kind of lay it out. This gets maximum sun exposure. Basically this is north right there. And this is kind of wedged open. So I get a ton of sun melting this driveway and the layout of this thing is awesome. I'm guessing this increased the value of my property more than that. So technically, you know, this is better than spending a hundred thousand on some car or something, unless it's some old Porsche, maybe that'll go up. But that's about what I spent. That's maybe about what you can expect to spend as well, but probably, honestly, probably you'll spend less than that. I don't, you know, don't hold me to it, but like I talked about earlier, if you're building, you know, maybe if you're building in Kansas, there's some crazy wind requirements and that needs to be beefed up. But a lot of places, the building is not gonna be this stout. 
So the building is probably gonna be a little bit cheaper. And then again, the concrete, my foundation had to be pretty crazy. I went for six inch slab. That's not cheap either. So it could be done for cheaper, definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. But yeah, if, you're, if you live in Colorado, that's, that's probably about what you're looking to spend on a 50 by 50. Now to reiterate one more, everyone's gonna be different, what you're gonna put in there different, how you're gonna use it. Maybe it's just you're building a big wood shop or maybe you need a place to store your boat. I don't know what you're gonna do, but if you have a bunch of vehicles, I wanted, I just kind of picked a number. I was like 50 by 50, 2,500 square. That sounds pretty cool. I'll be able to fit a bunch of stuff. I didn't have as many cars as I do now. I have a stupid amount of cars. I would have just gone longer and that's just for the sake of being able to park like three tundras deep. So in a perfect world, this would be like 50 by 70. It's just, that's more expensive, that's more concrete. I'd have to go through engineering and permitting again. But if, you know, if snap my fingers and make this a 50 by 70, that's probably what I would have done. But 50 by 50 is huge, is, is enough building for, for basically everyone. Yeah, that's that. So I'll leave, a, I'll leave a link down below. Again, Big Buildings Direct, they have a YouTube channel, super helpful. Probably my building will be up on their YouTube channel at some point and they have a website that's really helpful, but just reach out to them, let them know I sent you. And they have all kinds of different colors. Black is sick, color match screws, yeah. So then let me just kind of show you through the building a little more and talk through some of my plans in here. Now for floors, I don't know. My, I kind of got screwed, well, I didn't get screwed over. It's nobody's, nobody's fault, I guess, though. It, it left a really bad taste in my mouth. I have a bunch of spalding. They poured this late uh, for like the third time in this video, probably. I live in the mountains of Colorado. So they poured this in November and a couple days later it snowed and water got in here and froze and whatnot. And they said that's kind of what can cause this spalling. So I have this spalling all over and I'm a pretty nice guy. So I didn't, it wasn't like the pour was fine. They didn't really do anything wrong. I just wish they would have, I don't know, let me know that I need to put blankets, you know, do something. I don't, there's, there's certainly probably something I could have done, but I just kind of, they're like, yeah, that sucks, sorry. And there's not much I can do about it to fix it. I can do an epoxy coating and fill it and do everything like that. My original plan was kind of to just like stain the concrete and have concrete floors and I thought that would look cool. But this is so bad that that kind of is no longer no longer an option. Um, so that left a real bad taste in my mouth. Uh, so I don't know what I'm gonna do in here. I don't really like epoxy. I don't like epoxy and sparkles and that kind of stuff. So I might do like floor, the floor tile grid stuff. That gets kind of expensive too. Uh, so I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Right now it's just concrete that looks 10 years old. Uh, 20 years old, I don't know. So that, that was a huge disappointment for, for me. And yeah, and yeah, it was a bummer. The other thing is insulation. There's a bunch of different options. What we have here is basically, this is two or two and a quarter inch steel. And then these purlins that go across, you can get the metal horizontal or, or vertical or horizontal. I think vertical is a better look. I think it costs a little bit more because there's more labor because they basically got to run these things. So these can mount to. What you're left here though is three and a half inches between here and here. Uh, I'll have to measure. I think these are 32 inches apart for me. Again, this is going to vary for you. So I think we got eight foot eight foot span, so I could run, you know, usually you don't wanna go more than 24 inches for, for drywall, but it's nice that an eight foot sheet, I think again, will span whatever, three of these. Uh, so when I'm finishing off that, I'll have to kind of think about what I wanna do there. Exactly for insulation, I'm not an expert. There's all kinds, you will need a vapor barrier. So you could do rolls, you could use bats, you could use a lot of people cut up the rigid foam board, which has a really high R value, but that's so much cutting to try to pack into here. I'm leaning towards spray foam because it kind of tightens 
tightens everything up, kind of makes the structure a little more rigid. Right now I got a bunch of snow melting. You can probably hear it, it's dripping on here. You probably have heard dripping the entire video. So if you're gonna kind of finish this out and insulate it, then you're gonna wanna think about that, what you're gonna do. I will probably spray foam at least the, the ceiling, the roof, maybe the walls. I'm not sure on the walls yet, but that acts as a vapor barrier and insulation and kind of tightens everything up. And then I'll probably just paint all of that black. So it just kind of disappears up there because then you'd also have to think about, well, what do you want to do on the ceiling? If I wanted to put tongue and groove or something up there, that's a massive expense. So then I could do, you know, blown insulation with netting and then tongue and groove, and that would be more than just spray foam and spray foam's a better product. So I'll probably go spray foam, paint it black, put lighting in, and that'll just kind of disappear. So that's kind of my plan. Um, you can also heat, like you could run radiant floor tubing and heat the whole thing. And that's what a lot of people do. A lot of people spend a lot of time out here. I'm probably not gonna spend a ton of time out here. I like my house. Uh, I'll probably spend most of my time in my house and just come out here for, for projects and whatnot. Now, radiant floor heating only really makes sense if you're gonna keep it at a constant temperature all the time. And that'd be a lot of energy overhead for me if I'm out here once a week or maybe not even once a week. Uh, so I got actually this stove that I'm gonna put in. It's a rocket stove that can also build or burn pellets. Very interesting stove. Maybe I'll talk more on that later. I just bought it, so I'll, I'll talk about, you know, I didn't get it for free or anything. But researched a lot, got that stove. It's like a liberator, I think, or something. So I'll probably put that in. It heats up really fast and puts out a lot of heat. And then I can burn like basically anything that I want in it. So that's kind of my plan. Come out here, kick that on, just heat the whole building up real quick, get it up to temp, uh, rather than running all the PEX floor heat. The other thing I gotta think about is power. I could run from my panel out into here, or I could do like a solar. I have great Southern exposure on this roof over here. So I could do a solar battery setup. It's kind of what I'm leaning towards just cause it can be like a fully off grid, self-contained dealio. And then there's plumbing. Uh, plumbing, if you want to plumb it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk too much on it. Who knows, someone from the county might, might come after me, uh, but I, maybe I ran plumbing, maybe I didn't, but you do probably want to run plumbing before you do concrete because you probably want to run stuff underneath here and whether you run a separate septic tank or you're plumbing that into the sewage, whatever, you're probably gonna have to go through the county for that. Again, depending on where you live, the problem, once you put plumbing, just know this ahead of time, once you put plumbing into a building in most places, then this is no longer just like a barn or a shed or a garage. Now they're gonna to wanna to classify that as an ADU, an accessory dwelling unit. I think that's what it is. And it's basically a sec, they're gonna just classify it like, oh, someone's gonna live there. And then it's gonna pull up all these new flags and you're gonna to have to do all this other stuff with the county and it's gonna be a lot more difficult and probably you pay a lot more taxes and stuff. So I'm not gonna tell you what to do there, but if just like off the top of your head, you're like, I'm gonna put a bathroom below, just maybe think about exactly whether you wanna put a bathroom in it or not. Um, obviously if you're running electrical and you're permitting it again, that's all gonna have to go through permitting and, and all of that. So right now, I just permitted the structure. It's just a structure, it's just a shell, it's just for storage. What I do with permitting or not beyond that, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but you do you. Do you. Whereas with my house, you know, I just permitted, I gotta kinda just permit everything. But with a building like this, I don't know, I at least wanted to get the building permitted. So yeah, maybe in a theoretical world, I'll put like a little kitchenette. And then this is tall enough. I, I made it tall enough. I didn't think. I probably would have gone a foot, a foot taller if I had the foresight. Originally, I was just like, I just want a building to store stuff in. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Like, you know, whatever. I wasn't full-time YouTube guy at the time. I was just like, this is just a building that I want. Now I'm kind of like, well, it's gonna be more of a, a headquarters for my channel. I'll probably film a lot of videos out here. I'll work on, again, with the lifts. I'll probably work on that. Maybe I'll put a like podcast studio over here. 
Ashley sometimes is like, dude, Cooper's got to go to bed. You, you and your friends are too loud. So this will kind of naturally be a place we can hang out and be loud. And it's a little separate from the rest of the house. So once I got in here, fortunately, I did build it tall enough, you know, to fit tall vehicles. I think I'll be able to build a second level. Originally, I was thinking about putting a second level in the front here. And then, you know, it would be kind of low, it'd be seven or eight feet, but that's enough for kind of put a living room, kitchenette, whatever. Uh, Want to put some seating over here and kind of make like a hangout spot and just make it have a cool, the whole thing will have a cool aesthetic. So eventually, you know, come back to my channel in six months or, you know, stick around and get subscribed and watch the build because I'll, I'll kind of update the build. Hopefully in six months or so, it'll look really cool in here with like seating area and then maybe a second level. So when I was talking about this, when I was thinking about the second level, I was like, well, the only issue is, you know, I'd go 15, 20 feet from here and then across and that'd be 26 feet. And that'd be a big, big room, like a big studio or whatever, living room, maybe podcast studio. Maybe this will kind of be like a guest room house when people are coming and you know I, I want to kick them out of the main house and they want their own little space so I was originally thinking about putting it this way which would be fine for me because I could still fit lower vehicles under it but what it would kill would be the ability for like a 40 foot fifth wheel to fit in anymore so I had my friend Jim Jim came out he was actually he came out he was wondering about uh, various batteries like EcoFlow, Goal Zero type stuff. And so he came over and we talked to him. He hadn't seen the, he helped me build the house uh, and he wanted to see the barn. So I was kind of talking to him about the build out eventually. It's always good to get a second set of eyes because I was so caught on like that is the layout, but then I lose that and I don't like losing, you know, I don't, again, I don't have a fifth wheel, but I'm, if I'm investing all this to build this out, then I'm essentially cutting the tall part of my building in half. And I could park basically a 30 foot thing in here. And that's plenty for me right now, but maybe in the future it won't be. And so Jim was like, why don't you just do it this way? So basically it would be kind of long this way and then it would only take up half of this. So that way I could park a big tall thing this way still. And then that, this just kind of eats up this part of, of the bay. So that may be what I do, kind of have the room oriented that way. It also makes it easier because I could have stairs going up to it over there. Anyway, that's kind of the plans for this. Uh, and then maybe I'll put kind of like a wood, a wood shop or something, you know, maybe kind of section off an area back here for kind of a shop area, maybe some like miscellaneous welding tools, some automotive tools, whatever. But somewhere I'm gonna put a four, four post lift, again, to just kind of make oil changes and working on this to that a little easier. And then a two post lift to make everything easier. The two post lift's probably gonna go here, because again, I got tons of height to play with. The four post probably will go in one of the, the lean to sides. You see this over here, this is the LX. I think my white balance is a little weird from going in and out, but just got this baby wrapped in, it's called uh, Java, I think it's a brown. It's like a kind of a matte, satiny matte metallic brown. I think it looks amazing. I'm not gonna do a video on it. I should be getting wheels and tires tomorrow. Right now it looks horrible with with this setup, but I'm gonna do, this is gonna be a full build later, but a little sneak peek on the wrap. Look at that, these things just, they look so muscular. LX 570s, 200 series Land Cruiser. Still love them. But yeah, this is phase one of the big black barn. I don't know, give me some, give me some, what should we call this build? I'm not into name, you know, like, most of my vehicles don't have names or anything. I'm not like, I gotta name things all the time, but I feel like my, L-L-O-D-H-Q should have some cool, cool name that I can like refer to it as. Uh, the other thing that'll be nice is, you know, I got friends that live out here, we'll go camping or whatever together. And then I have friends with all kinds of vehicles. So now my house is probably gonna be the place where I'm like working on cars. So yeah, sorry, Ashley came out. I needed to help her with something. I forget where I was, but 
a name for this. I don't know. I feel like it should it should have a name. Also, I forgot to mention in last video, flannels. People always email me and ask me when the flannels are getting restocked. This is, if, if you're new here or whatever, I designed a flannel with my friends at Vertex's. There's a few different colorways. Incredible flannel. People love it. I love it. Has pockets, snaps. It's, it's a great flannel. They restocked it a couple weeks ago, but I think some things have already sold out in that time frame. This is the third, the third or fourth restock. This flannel just a lot of people are buying it, which is great. It it makes me look good, like I designed a good product. Vertex will want to collaborate with me more on stuff. So stoked that it keeps selling out, but it keeps selling out and people are bummed because they want to get it. So anyway, if they restocked it. Hopefully they have your size and the color you're looking for in stock. But yeah, this building, so it's too bright. It's too bright out here to film. That's the other that's the other nice thing is like, I used to always do videos in the driveway and my old house's driveway was kind of like known. That was like the driveway. It was like where all the magic went down. But if it was windier, if it was rainier, if it was snowier, if the sun was just too bright or any number of reasons, it made me not able to film in the driveway or not want to film in the driveway or just like it was annoying. Now I got a big open space so I can film stuff in here. And then I'll have lifts and everything to where I'll be able to work on, do more installs and stuff here rather than trying to do it in my driveway when it's like five degrees with, with snow on the ground. So that will all be super, super nice and handy. And then additionally, buddies that work on their vehicles, they could come here, could crack some beers, have some pizzas, work on some vehicles, excited about about all the possibilities that this building kind of gives me. I can have projects that are big and bulky and tools laying around and wheels off and not have to worry about like trying to cover it up when it snows or whatever or kicking Ashley out of the garage because this will be kind of like the daily, you know, Ashley will park in there and maybe whatever car I'm like primarily dailying will park in there and then this will just be like everything else. So I'm super excited about that. Again, I don't want it to create like a big disconnect from you guys like, oh, Mike used to be a normal guy. Now he's got a metal building. Yeah, I do have a metal building now. And I don't, I, I guess, I don't know. I'll apologize for it or, or something. I understand how it looks. I understand that it, it has come to a place where it looks like I have daddy's money or something. But I don't really want to apologize for, for putting on a pretty serious heavy duty grind for the last decade of my life and able to get to a place where I can, I can buy some cool things and, and feel the need to apologize for it. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that, but I also don't want to look like some entitled douchebag that is just completely disconnected from, from reality. I'm still, the same hardworking dude that I was when I started my channel like eight years ago with no intention of creating a YouTube channel. Just trying to get some videos out there for educational purposes for people that asked about it over on Instagram actually, that's how my YouTube channel started. And yeah, worked, worked very hard, multiple jobs and a lot of partnerships and planning and business decisions to get me to to hear. So I'm sure this video will elicit some daddy's money comments and some I'm unsubscribing. I liked you back when you just had a Tacoma and I guess I get it. I get it, but I'm the same dude. Not much has changed except when you started watching my channels eight years ago, it was at the front end of my decade of hard work. And now we're 10 years in, uh, so there's a little bit of a difference there, I guess. But all that to say, I, I know people, especially that haven't been following the channel, are just like, what's this 20 year old guy with all this money, must be nice kind of deal. And maybe I'll just finally, I've talked about it casually in passing in videos and whatnot, like, I don't know, make a video, how I have all this money, you know, something, some stupid title. I don't have a lot of money because I spent, <laughs> spent it all. Um, but give you a very detailed walk, and I'm not trying to sell you an ebook or anything like that, or even necessarily say to follow in my footsteps because I, I took a long roundabout way to 
to get here. And I, I have friends that are wildly successful and I am not that friend. I, it just maybe looks that way on YouTube, but I'm not like willy nilly just buying stuff and spending money. Like, like it's crazy. Everything I have budgets, everything has to fall inside of constraints. Everything has to make sense. Everything, uh, there are trade-offs with this and that. So maybe I'll make a video about that. I don't know. Comment down below if you'd like to, to see that, where I just kind of talk, talk about my journey and my mindset and kind of what, what I did through. Again, not to sell you on seeing ebook or even like give you any kind of business advice, but I, I always think it's curious. Whenever I talk to people that even have a fractional amount of success, I'm always interested to hear their story. And that's maybe the, the business minded entrepreneurial side of me, but I always find it interesting. So if you'd like to see that video, let me know. Uh, and then let me know if you, if there's specific things that you'd like to hear about that. Um, yeah. But I think that's it. You may have seen this F-150 over here. That's not mine. Just people think I get, this is my parents have this. I think it's a, I think it's like a 2012 F-150, just base model. But it's a sweet truck. That's what, this is what, this is what used to be on my brother's truck. Then my brother was getting rid of it and my parents bought it from him. This is kind of the truck that made me say, I like Ford trucks, that truck right there. Uh, okay, rambling, we're getting into rambling. So a couple videos coming up, definitely gonna go camping soon. Uh, I had a lot of time sensitive projects, a lot of stuff around the holidays. <sighs> Knocked most of those out. Coming up on the channel is the build out of the barn, the build out of the LX, the build out of the F550 bus and then other than that lots of camping and whatnot so stay tuned i'll put links down below to everything i talked about in this video i as always i appreciate you watching thumbs up and subscribing especially appreciate you commenting uh sharing this video with friends or whatever if you have any questions about metal buildings or whatnot i'll try my best to answer them again i'm not an expert but i did do a lot of research and i have one and i asked a lot of questions through the through the process so yeah, this is after Christmas, but I hope you had an awesome Christmas and I think this will be before New Year's. So I hope you have a great New Year's. I'm not really a resolution kind of guy, but 2024 will certainly be a year of more adventures than 2023 was. 2023 was a beer, the year of grinding and working way too much on, on the house and just trying to survive new baby. First year of marriage with, well, second year of marriage technically with Ashley. Uh, but 2023 kind of sucked looking forward to a better 2024. So hopefully you guys stick around with me then, uh, and let me know what you'd like to see here on the channel, but appreciate it. And until next time guys, take care.